This tech tip focuses on visibility inside the workpiece during the CAM session. The part we see here is a part likely to be turned, and those of you already using Designer are likely familiar with Designer's dynamic section function. If I section this along the y-axis, it makes it very easy to see inside the part. Well, we can do similar things within EdgeCam. So if I minimize Designer, and bring that same part into my EdgeCam session, Straight away, we'll go to the View Properties available from the Heads Up display. We'll go to the Clipping tab, and you want to think about where you're clipping. You're cutting away the positive side of the Y axis at a level of zero, and that's how we want to think about that. And with that done, we can see a similar view. Now, I want to point out that the view clipping is independent for each view. So if I split two views, and I have the view on the right side be an axial view looking toward the chucking system. It does inherit the clipping from the previous view. I can easily turn that off. I have one view with clipping and one without. Now when I look at the part, I see that there's the counterbore side, and that's actually the side I might want to do first in this case. If I flip the part, notice the part is updated and accurate to both views, and if I align the C so one of the ears is at zero degrees, that the clipping is again maintained correctly in the left side view. So view clipping is a common thing for turn applications. If you've attended Hexagon's US-based turning fundamentals, your instructor likely went over that with you. Let's go look at a mill example now. So in the mill example, first of all, there's a lot of visibility that I might want to control. So at one level, we see the CNC machine used in this machining sequence coming from the post processor. As many of you likely know, you can easily turn off the display of the machine, the fixtures, zoom extents, and see the part. But the part still has a mixture of part, stock, tool path, and all that. With the solid rendered, we see the solid. We can unrender it to see kind of better detail sometimes. We can render the stock, or both could be done together, really up to the user. Does view clipping work in mill? Well, let's have a look. If I go to the clipping tab, and this time, again, think about where you want to cut away, the negative side of the y-axis at zero. View clipping does work in mill. It can be used, and it exposes what is happening inside the part detail. Well, another level of visibility is at the tool level. So if I right click over one of the folders for the tool or the tool itself, we can turn on or off the layer and that turns on or off visibility of everything. We can also right click over individual items and turn off their visibility. And that allows me to demonstrate to you that we've isolated roughing for the bores as a unique cycle. And again, kind of see the inside the part a little bit of what's happening. I want to show some things we can do in simulator to help give, again, better visibility about what's happening on the inside details that aren't quite so easy to see in the cam file sometimes and also in the machine tool during actual machining. Now we can see that in simulator, we can turn on and off different components of the machine. So if I turn off the guards or enclosure. They look great for a demo post, but perhaps I want to see the internal functional things. And then as we begin to play simulation, we see the process. In this case, this process begins with using a touch probe, where the probe is going to pick up the work coordinate system. And then we're moving toward roughing. So the first tool is a face mill that's used, where a unique color has been assigned to help visually pick up what's happening in simulator and then moving to a smaller tool for the heavy roughing in this aluminum component. Now, you may be aware that we can turn off the mode of machine display. It's great to see the machine move, but sometimes it's more helpful to have an isolated view that leaves the material still while the tool moves around it, more of a primitive or level one cam simulation. I'm going to stop the simulation once this reaches the end of this tool so that we can make some quick changes to our view. I want to see the inside detail. How can I do that? Well, one way is that we can 
change the display of the stock and I can change over to be translucent. So it is semi-transparent and I can see a bit inside it. That helps a little bit with seeing where things go. Certainly collision checking is live. I know there's no collision problems. The tool's entering through the hole from the previous machining, but what else could we do? Well, if you right click, you have an option for section view. So if I turn on section view, I can then pick the plane to section in. So in this case, I want to slice in the ZX plane and cut away the negative Y at zero. And there's also a slider where you can dynamically control exactly where the slice should occur. And this gives an even better level of visibility of exactly what's happening with the tool inside the part. Again, we can see the previous machine stock where there is a hole. The roughing cycle intelligently enters through the hole and just removes remaining material to the part per the designation. If we switch the work plane, we can again move the slider and see the level of view section from a different plane if we wish. So the section view, neat tip, hope that helps you out. Again, as we move to the finishing, we can see the level of detail. And I want to point out that with section view, you can do comparison. So this allows me when I just fast forward to the end of the sequence to quickly confirm that everything that I need to machine is machined in that setup. I want to, as a final kind of demonstration here, I want to switch over to a complex MTM, multitasking machine. We have an aerospace housing that's machined in this large machining center. Straight away, we're going to head to simulator and begin to press play, and we'll see some turning work that begins first. So some turning, and then switch out to a live tool where there's milling some flats, followed by some other heavy milling and drilling, simultaneous machining, quite a bit of work done on this complex workpiece. Part of the question as we head to some of the inside detail is how well can we see what's happening? So here we're now drilling some holes and want to ensure they adequately poke through the wall. Well, rather than tilting the view to peer kind of down the bore, when we right click, we don't have section view on turn or MTM, but we do have some equally helpful things of a three quarter turn view, such as here. So I can cut away a quadrant of the part and I can see the inside detail from here. And this is gonna be really helpful to see exactly what's happening. Additionally, as we play, see the motion, we can expand an individual cycle, click to specific events, use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move up and down, and really see a move to move or point to point if you're thinking of events, a move to move or point to point what's happening. We also have a profile turn view where we can cut away an entire half the part, very similar to a section view in this case. And this gives, again, a high degree of visibility of is the tool fully moving to the depth we need to go inside that tapered bore. We've advanced to a critical stage of the machining process where an angled head is used and coupled with five axis simultaneous milling, we're removing material from inside the part. We trust that simulator's collision checking has ensured that we don't have any collisions with tool and material or interference with holders or anything else, but it still would be nice to see visibly what's happening inside this area. How can we do that? Well, if I look in from a view that's a view convenient for me, in this case, the front view, so I'm looking across the workpiece from the operator perspective. We can then use the profile turn view to cut away half the workpiece, and now I have really great visibility of exactly what is happening inside that workpiece, how's the tool orientation, making sure that we're satisfied with this essentially blind cut. Looks great. We fast forward to the end of the process, just the quick recaps that we have the three-quarter turn view, can be very helpful, again, for seeing the detail and the profile turn view on MTMs, as well as the section view on milling. Collectively, these view controls help make it possible to see what's happening inside the part. 
We can also use view comparisons to ensure that we have machined the things we've set out to in our manufacturing process. Do you have questions on this or other topics? Please contact us to discuss. We would love to hear from you. Thank you.